Hello everyone. How are you today? I hope you're having an amazing day. Sorry about the lighting here today, but uh, it's sunny out and that's what happens. So, <clears throat> hello Jessica, Lisa, we're going to hold on for just one more second here until um, more people figure us out and that we get online. Ah, start asking your questions if you have them. Uh, and we will, I will try to get to them in a little bit here. <clears throat> I'm not ignoring you, I'm just typing something in. And I can't do two things at once, so. <laughs> Okay, so today we are talking about the much debated um, conversations or debates about thoughts versus intuition. So what's a thought, right? Like we're constantly asking ourselves, what's a thought? So when I go into a thought, it's, it comes from the memory bank, which is basically the amygdala um, and the hippocampus. Now, the amygdala is really good at storing things away in the um, unconscious of who we are. It can hide things. It can stash things away, all those kinds of things. Our audio, our ability to uh, hear, comes from the audio cortex, and our visual comes from the visual cortex. The emotions are stored in cell memory in the body, right, all the way throughout our cells which is when, when we do healings or when we do um, the Akashic Record, anything like that, like everything is stored within your energy field someplace. It can be in the physical form, it can be in the emotional form, it can be in the mental form or in the spiritual forms. It's just where it's located at is generally the trick about where we can find it. Hello, Joe Marie, how are you? Um, so with that, we there is no like real evidence, right, to thoughts, to what they are, to where they where where our brain houses them. Um, it's all just basically speculation. But we've been taught, we've been programmed to believe that thoughts reside in the brain someplace. Correct. I'm going to ask if you think that that's true. Ask your soul self, is that the truth? Do all my thoughts come from the amygdala or the hippocampus or are they even thoughts or are they just memories? Memories are different from thoughts, right? Memories are not the same thing as thoughts. Thoughts we acquire to be like things that we think about. Is that memories? Could be some of it. The only way that we have any type of evidence is an indirect kind of evidence. Like science cannot say that thought comes from this place in our brain. It can hypothesize that it comes from the amygdala and the hippocampus, but there's no thought when you cut it open. You can't see like words and letters and symbols in there, <laughs> right? So there's, so it's a mystery. It's worse than intuition because it's a, theory yet it's a theory that's not proven much like intuition so but the indirect evidence that comes through proximal cause which is just the stimuli around us the drama basically and distal cause which is the experience so that's the only evidence that we have that says that we that the things that we think come from someplace within the brain. But what if they came from your finger? When you put your finger on something, do you not recognize the experience? Who says it comes from the brain? It doesn't even make really much sense to me that that's exactly where it would, it would and could only come from. Because if we actually have cells that hold the emotional body, then 
aren't the, don't the emotions think? Doesn't the physical body think? Does the spiritual bodies think? Sometimes I think they're all thinking at once and I feel like I'm going crazy. <laughs> so if we want any kind of, I don't know, some type of a theory, we have to look to the quantum world because the quantum world sees everything in a 360 degree view, right? Where infinite possibilities reside, where everything is a probability. If we move into the realms of quantumness, then absolutely the body can think. Emotions can think, the spiritual form can think, the soul, energy, a tree can think, if that's actually a probability or a possibility. So, intuition. Intuition is your natural way of being. It's just your natural way of knowing and understanding not only this world, this third dimensional world that we live in, but beyond that. Right? Like that we know that there's something else out there. Even if you don't believe in a source, or if you believe, or if you do believe in a source, you still know and understand that there's something else. Right? Like that's an intuitive knowing. That's a knowing that's deep within you. I don't care what your beliefs are. There's something that says to you, there's something else. I know that there's something else. Maybe it's just the cosmos doesn't really matter but there's a knowing there's an instant knowing there's a there's a way of understanding something without having any scientific or not scientific reasoning behind it like you don't have to reason things out you just instantly do it or you instantly know something or you can hear things beyond what most people hear or you see things beyond what most people see can those be thoughts I'm gonna say me it's possible so what if we actually followed the quantum world and we melded thought and intuition together What if we melded the consciousness of who we are and the unconsciousness and we provided, which would provide a complete 360 degree view? How would the world be different? How would your world be different? What if those things that you believed were held in the unconsciousness? deep within the amygdala or the hippocampus were actually not hidden at all. What if they were memory or thought from a different place, from a different time, and you intuitively knew that they were there? Deep within a cell, maybe it's not even deep, our cells are right here, so how could it be deep? What if everything you wanted to know in this whole world, conscious or unconscious, is right before you? Within a thought or within your intuition? Could you imagine how amazing, how amazing your life would be and how creative you could be and how magnificent you could be if you changed your belief, stopped debating about whether it's a thought or if it's intuition and just demanded it to meld together so that you could see, hear, be everything. Isn't that brilliant? Like let that soak in. Let that become who you are. <laughs> Can you imagine all the unconsciousness that we believe is unconsciousness, but it's really not? And the consciousness, what we think is real, but it's really not. 
melded together into wholeness and you have access to every single tiny bit of that. That's what we want you to be. We want you to be all of that and more because it's a possibility. Everything is a possibility. Start believing in possibilities. Start changing the world with possibilities. What's possible? Change that judgmental mind into an inquisitive mind. And start to think, wow, what would happen if? What would happen? If you melded <laughs> consciousness and unconsciousness, the probabilities are enormous. <laughs> All right. Ask your questions. This is your chance to ask questions. Don't lose the chance. I do have a live event coming up. It's called uh, Become the Channel or Become a Channel. Because when you do meld the conscious and the unconscious, you're just a pure open channel. And what does a channel do? They have access to everything. Absolutely everything. So don't deny yourself your ability to channel. Everyone has the ability. Everyone. And your ability to channel your higher self, source, whatever it is that you're interested in. Like that's becoming more and more and more important every moment. Why? Because we're multidimensional beings. And if we limit ourselves to only the consciousness, or we limit ourselves to the unconsciousness, then we're denying ourselves infinite possibilities. I don't like denying myself of anything. <laughs> Why? What's the purpose of that? All right, peeps, come on, ask your questions. Or maybe, are you asking questions? Oh, Joe Marie, tips for clearing anxiety. Ugh. Why do you have anxiety anyway? You know anxiety is like living in the future, correct? What are you worrying about? There's no sense of worrying about anything because it's all going to play out in the best of your and highest of your good anyway. Why would you worry? Why would you give your power up to anxiety, to the sense of worry? Don't give your power up to anything. I don't care what it is. School, relationships. That's just the ego trying to create fear in you, more fear in you, to hold you back. That's all that, it, that's all that anxiety is. So deal with the issues. School, relationships. Live in the present moment. Here's, here's the other deal is there's no clearing anymore. We don't necessarily clear energy any longer. We transform it. I'm going to say that again. We do not clear energy any longer. That's an old paradigm. That's an old way of moving energy away from us or within us. Now, in the new earth, we transform the energy. We change it into something that we want, dream, and desire about. So if you're trying to move away from anxiety, then transform the anxiety. When you find yourself worrying about something, stop yourself and say, oh, I'm worrying. I am not living in the future. Bring yourself to present moment time because opportunities reside right here. They don't reside out there. They reside right here. And if you're not living right here, you're missing the opportunities. That's what's creating the anxiety. Because you're not living right here. You're out there worrying about finances or looking for a job or looking for the perfect mate. Right? <laughs> All right, good. I'm glad that made sense. <laughs> All right, Lisa, how are you? Thought versus intuition. Everywhere I go, people look familiar. 
everywhere I go, people look familiar. Well, sure, because, you know, you're remembering them all. <laughs> Literally in the new earth, like we remember everything. So familiar energy, familiar faces, like that vibration of who they are, that's what you're remembering. Right? That's what's feeling familiar. Literally, it's your soul's energy trying to move you more into understanding that you're multidimensional. So don't be afraid. <laughs> it's all good. Lots of that's going to continue to happen. Like the people that you know or people that you see or it's awkward. So ask for the wisdom, right? Like if it's a different kind of feeling about people, um, just ask for the wisdom to show up rather than the remembrance of those lifetimes. We don't have to remember any of that stuff any longer. It doesn't help us. It actually keeps us more stuck. But you do want to bring the wisdom from those relationships or from those, um, the, like their vibration or their frequency right you want you want the you want to bring that into this wholeness not necessarily the weirdness of the relationship <laughs> i hope that makes sense <laughs> i hope that makes sense <laughs> and so stop staring <laughs> and just say oh i kn i know that vibration what's the wisdom right like yeah don't don't get yourself all caught up into that that's the ego wanting to judge bring up past memory or past cellular memory or, you know, stuff like that. So that's just the ego. So chalk it up to the ego and say, oh, yeah, okay, we're going to be inquisitive. I only want the wisdom. Because when you're inquisitive, you only want the wisdom. You don't want the judgment about the relationship or anything that's been in the past. Yeah, just accept it. Because it's going to be happening more and more and more. Which is, it's actually kind of fun. Like I have had tons and tons of uh, those kinds of things ha happened over the last couple of years. And there's not one person that I know, <laughs> literally not one person that I know anymore, who doesn't, um, who I don't have some sort of past wisdom with. <laughs> okay. Joe Marie, so with uh, meeting new people, then it's been happening big to me. What else can I do? The Are you talking about the um, awkwardness of knowing their vibration? Or are you talking about anxiety? <laughs> yeah, it doesn't make sense. <laughs> You're right. It doesn't make sense. <laughs> oh, isn't it just the most amazing day? Gosh, it's just been such a beautiful day. All right. Uh, anybody else have a question? Otherwise, I'm going to go for a walk because it's beautiful outside. Thought versus intuition. Don't give it any more thought. Just use your intuition. Become a channel. If you don't have, if you don't have, if you haven't been doing that, it's time to do it. I also have an online um, version of it, and so you can do it all online. You're welcome, Lisa. You're very welcome. So you can do the class all online, and there's practice sessions with me, so it's, it's fun. I encourage you to do it. All right. Have a great evening. Take care, everyone, and we'll see you next week. Bye.